online for the Arts Festival Summit 2022 in Yerevan, Armenia. Hosted by the Yerevan Perspective International Music Festival. More info on Eva's website. Not only experiences, but their endeavors in reaching these or the most important of these goals in bring <coughs> uh, making connections between their festivals. So that's the expectations. Primarily, it's a European. Uh, it's it's really uh, connected to the to the original uh, slogan of Europe for festivals and festivals in Europe. Next slide, please. Because we also were wondering about the experiences of those uh, or the achievements or prides of those cities in connection with their relationship to their festivals. What do they believe that the festivals offer to the city? And there again, you can see the, the various options that occurred during the preparatory talks. Again, I ask you if someone would pick, thinking that in their cities, one of those items is especially relevant. Ah, so vibrancy is something which you think that festivals lend to your city, and ah, the cohesion. Yes, the, the uh, urban co cohesion in this uh, the, among the, the population, the inhabitants. So this is yours. Next slide. Yes, vibrancy was the most uh, the most often mentioned as, as 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 the contribution of festivals to the cities, and identity and brand, which are related things. As you can see, some of these uh, items are uh, realistic and and prosaic; others are more symbolic or poetic. Uh, it seems that most of our people, that, that the, the people from the cities and festivals with whom we, we consulted, really tended to choose the, the symbolic, the ideological uh, items, less the practical ones, which, prob which of course still in the future may come up important, that is joint marketing and logistical cooperation and joint research and so on and so forth. Now, that's more or less <coughs> the end of my part. We may come back to, to, to details of the FAC link, which I repeat will begin officially tomorrow with the signature of, of the seal, the, uh, the founding document by the seven founding cities. And now, I pass the word to Nele and Nicola. I, I also pass the mic. Thank you. Um, yeah, just maybe to tell you a little bit why we are here and what we represent at this moment here in Yerevan. Uh, we are both members of a civil society initiative called A Soul for Europe which interestingly enough came from, uh, from a quote from, from um, Jacques, um, Jacques Delors, uh, whom we wanted to um, invite to a meeting in Berlin at, in the year 2004. He couldn't come, but he allowed us to, to uh, use this quote um, because um, we were looking for something more based on art and culture in the context of political debates. Uh, when we came back from Paris, 
uh, and offered this uh, soul for Europe uh, quote. Everybody said, but a soul, this is much too romantic, not realistic enough, uh, choose something else. But we kept to it, and nowadays I think it's absolutely great we kept a soul for Europe because that is something we believe is absolutely necessary and maybe best uh, presented in art and culture. So it was an initiative um, created in, in the year 2004 after the um, Berlin Wall um, went down and we were united. The city of Berlin suddenly realized it did not really invent a new role. It was thought to be in the middle of Europe, but uh, Vienna or Paris were much more active. So there was no idea really for Berlin what to be and what to do, and a group of citizens sat together for some months, and the first thing was to create a big conference in, on the 9th of November, symbolic date, uh, in the year 2004, and the idea was to bring together politicians from all over Europe with a younger generation of citizens, again from all over Europe. Because we had some good support from we heard von Weizsäcker and some other important, <coughs> important politicians, we really succeeded to bring together a very uh, impressive group of yeah, political representatives. And through a Dutch foundation, we could invite more than 60 or 70 young persons, especially also from Eastern, so called Eastern European countries. And out of this group, uh, out of this meeting, which was uh, interesting because we said we don't want uh, big statements, we want people to stay and to go into dialogue across all uh, uh, political, artistic, uh, geographical borders, and nobody should just read a text but talk to each other. In a way, it worked. So at the end uh, of this um, conference, we had some European foundations that uh, offered some financial help. So an office could be set up in Berlin. And uh, the idea was from the ideas that had been created in that conference to start um, actions, uh, debates, meetings in Europe. And uh, a group of nearly 50, 60, I can't really remember the, the number um, of participants um, decided to stay together being, and they gave each other the name a strategy group, a strategy group for a soul for Europe. The, uh, from then on, we, um, we tried, and uh, Nicola will maybe explain a little bit the structure. There is no structure, but there is a structure. We started to travel through Europe, offering our um, experience and our, our ideas to different uh, parts of Europe, to different partners, very much engaged in um, the idea of the ECOG, of the cultural capital. We invested a lot of in, um, <coughs> time and um, yeah, and uh, experience to develop together with the Brussels um, representatives for this topic and things like that. And up to now, we are still uh, working, there's, um, we are still working uh, between us. It's, um, as Nicola might explain, it's just persons, it's no real structure. And we still try to work on that um, idea. We need a dialogue between politics and uh, civil society between citizens and representatives of cities. We need um, a better um, understanding of what Europe could be, and we think Europe is uh, in the need of us, of all of us, especially nowadays. And uh, the quote we always uh, use is, uh, Soul for Europe is not lobbying for culture. We are lobbying for Europe based on the creativity, creativity and possibilities of art and culture. And that is our basis. Uh, on which we work, and uh, on that basis we came together, of course, with the development of, of uh, this, uh, what Peter was just explaining, uh, of the um, festival seal. So we are together in that uh, aim uh, to really, on our side, more on a political, uh, social level to develop uh, the idea of using festivals in cities or using cities for their festivals to come to a better uh, common um, uh, possibility to create a better Europe through all that what we can offer from art and culture. And I think that is something that brings us together uh, and working as we did in the past a lot with cities, with regions. Uh, also talking about cross-border possibilities uh, of periphery problems and so on and so on. 
So that is our basis, and I think we are really on, on a good way together with the other initiative, and that is why they asked us, Nicola and me, to present a little bit the ideas and uh, experiences and questions uh, we developed uh, over the time, which might help um, to really create a new understanding, not only between uh, cities and festivals, but between the people who do that. And I think that is a very important uh, basis, uh, personal meetings, personal dialogue uh, between all uh, different levels of um, yeah, cities and so on. So maybe Nicola can explain a little bit who, um, yeah, like, um, <coughs> how we are structured and how we work uh, before we go into the first questions. Um, yes, thank you, Nello. You, you, I think you almost said it all. But uh, uh, we are well. Also, for Europe, as you say, is not really an organization. It's maybe a disorganization, but uh, based on, on on the relation between people and and structured around a group of um, uh, at the moment uh, thirty individuals from twenty countries. Most of them being active in the cultural field in general. That means uh, some work in the culture an art field, uh, others are more into the media field, for example, some even into the political field, it happens. And um, and the, it, it's not an organization, but still we are an EEIG structure, so uh, a European uh, organization with a, a European structure. Uh, but the, the, main, the main office, I would say, is, is in Berlin at the moment, supported by a, a foundation. Uh, but it's a project-based uh, disorganization. So um, the project we work on, we work on is a, a yearly conference, um, mainly taking place in, in Berlin. Uh, from a year to the other, the form, format is different, the size is, uh, is different. But still, as uh, Nella mentioned, uh, we still involve a civil society uh, people and um, policymakers, uh, politicians, uh, we put them at the same table, whether they are from um, working at local levels or uh, European levels. So it's, it's, it's somehow we try to create some spaces of um, exchange and transmission. And apart from uh, this uh, yearly conference, uh, we also organize other forms like a uh, forum, which are, um, are more related to uh, maybe local issues, but always in connection with the, with the European issues. Um, so th there will be the next conferences in Berlin on the 9th of uh, November. And we are also preparing uh, another one in Spain, in Extremadura. Uh, next year, so in uh, Berlin, as you may know, is a city, and Extremadura is more rural area uh, in in Spain. Um, should I say something? No, it's fine. Huh? We can go into the discussion. Yeah, maybe just just to say the the uh, the IFA also proposed us to uh, um, facilitate uh, this workshop because um, uh, as part of the IFA seal, there will be a more uh, talks and, and presentation this afternoon and tomorrow, and then the signature, of course. But what we would like to address in particular is the connection in between city festivals and citizens. And this aspect is uh, rather important to us. Um, <clears throat> so now we will enter into a discussion. We will propose some open question, and then everyone can take the floor. Uh, we should not forget that there are people online, but uh, Gorgan should tell us if there are some some remarks or, or people that will send messages to to chat. Um, so we can start, right? We start with the first question. Do you want to ask it? Um, I do that. Okay. Um, so we we have uh, yesterday. Some of you uh, were with us. Uh, walking and talking around the city, so you may have already prepared while sleeping uh, your answers. Um, so the first question. Uh, first question, which today's artist for you best capture the soul of your city? Okay, not an artist who's living in your city uh, 
uh, four centuries ago, but artists, artistic groups, whether they are performers, musicians, uh, visual artists, etc., that for you represent your city. And, and do you work with them? What do you do with them? Are they part of, are they participating into festivals, for example? Do you, as a city, do you support them? Maybe not. Maybe they can represent your city, but you don't support them. So, I would like to start. Does he or she has to be alive? Hmm? Does he or she has to be alive? Yeah, or, 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 or dead recently. Yeah. <laughs> there are some. We have plenty of microphones. Thanks to the technicians. And just to say, it's recorded. That's also why we. It's, I'll be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Hello again. Uh, my name is Milica. I'm from Belgrade. I represent the city of Belgrade and Belgrade Fortress, where many of festivals takes place. Uh, but answer to your question wouldn't be directly connected to festivals, because uh, I won't be mentioning one particular artist, but more of a group. And why I think it's important, because um, when you put those questions, one of the answers was uh, involving uh, all society levels into culture, into festivals, into uh, just making them visible. And there, there uh, why my answer would be a group of artists, especially they're interesting because sometimes they, uh, not long time ago in the past, they wasn't cons uh, seen as an artist, but they actually are. I'm talking about street art, about murals and graffiti. And there is quite vivid scene in Belgrade of that kind of art. And uh, only recently they, uh, they were put, uh, uh, they got real meaning. They, they, uh, people got, got to know them and it is actually a social active group, and you can learn a lot of from them. They are mostly doesn't have any previous art education. Some of them them does, of course. And a uh, good thing about them is you can see their work everywhere. And that's why I think street art is an important part of art society, and that's why I'm not mentioning name. I can read their name because they are interesting, but uh, they're pseudonyms usually. So one of them is called Keksi Mleko, which means uh, cookies and milk. Uh, Zez, Sonia, Quem, Hope, uh, Kid Leaf, and so on. So they're, I think, it's a good thing to think about involving them, not just in festivals, but, but in art scene. Thank you very much for this, uh, this presentation of uh, an artist, no? You are uh, I, hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Tom. Sorry, I was a bit late for the beginning because I arrived very, very early this morning. Um, my name is Tom. I'm a stage director uh, based in Dublin, in Ireland. Um, and uh, just kind of before I talk about the artists, it's interesting to think about street arts. We also have really great street artists um, and graffiti artists in Dublin, um, but they keep coming up against the planning laws. And this this conversation, this this exchange between artists and the city, it, there's really a flashpoint in Dublin now between street artists and the planning the city. Um, these, this very artistic street art is uh, very popular and people are giving permission for the work to happen on their buildings. It's not just a guerrilla thing, but because it's in public space, um, they need planning permission from the city council. So the city council is making them paint over them and this case is going to court. And so it's interesting, this, 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 this idea of a city which is presenting, like Dublin, which is you know using culture uh, to brand itself and presenting itself, um, but yet this kind of urban culture is very contested. Um, the artist I wanted to talk about actually is not from Dublin, but I think um, uh, is a really good example of what's happening in Ireland right now. Um, 
uh, an artist called Denise Chela, who's a hip hop artist uh, from Limerick, uh, which is a, a city in the southwest of Ireland. And I, I bring her up because 20 years ago, uh, I wouldn't have been talking about a hip hop artist. Um, Ireland, uh, the Ireland that I grew up in, uh, so I'm 42, I was born in 1980, uh, was very white. Um, you would see the one or two black or brown people in the town would be very conspicuous. Um, but with the uh, waves of migration uh, that happened to Ireland uh, in the, particularly in the 90s, uh, suddenly we have a hip hop scene. And suddenly we have uh, artists, uh, black and brown artists who speak with Irish accents, who have Irish passports. And so for the first time, um, uh, during the pandemic, one of the first kind of major cultural events was a live stream from the National Gallery, uh, from the Great Hall of the National Gallery, in front of one of the most famous paintings in their collection. And this was a young uh, black Irish woman uh, rapping about uh, her identity and her culture and it being seen as Irish culture and playing you know, this artist and her a crew of, of hip hop performers that are now performing, uh, uh, you know, at the major festivals in Dublin, but also is the artist that's being sent abroad to uh, pop and rock showcases in Europe and in South by Southwest and places like this. So uh, it's interesting to yeah reflecting on how how an artist can uh, can stand for uh, without having to. Um, kind of carry all of the weight of that responsibility, but can stand for all of the shifts that are happening in this society. Hi, uh, this is Sepper from Iran. I'm working as a curator and agent as well. So uh, what I actually wanted to mention about the artist, now that Yelitsa mentioned that sentence, I wanted to talk about that sentence. That the sentence wrote, including every social group in city's culture agenda, which for me it's, it's actually a non-realistic sentence about festivals. I do understand that it could apply to artists, but rather with festivals, it, it's a bit I idealistic and poetic to talk about festivals because our festivals are exclusive, yet hoping for an inclusive future. So the artist that I want to talk about named Hamid Purazari, he's quite well known in Lyft in London, and in Zusha Tati Spectacle because of the shows that he take there. Uh, but in Iran, in Tehran, he's based in Tehran. And the reason that I'm bringing up his name is that what he did for Tehran during the past 15 years that he was working was something spectacular because he included all <coughs> social groups from the West, from the South. He worked with Afghan immigrants in the Southwest of Tehran where the streets are, they dare you to walk in those streets, like yet having an artist daring to go reside there, work with Afghan immigrant children who are not necessarily welcome in the Iranian society. It was something, and he did like Brecht's uh, Caucasian chalk circle, if I'm saying the name in English correct. So he did it with them, then he did an Antigone with Iranian children who are having a bad parents or who are not having a parents in south of Tehran. So he turned rural areas and he turned destructive areas in different aspects of the city, in different areas of Tehran into cultural centers. So what he did for the people in the, the, the different social groups in Tehran is much more than anyone could have achieved in Iran, in my point of view. And he's like, like the children call him father because he's like an amazing figure as an artist and as a citizen. I think to, <coughs> to add another question, I mean, um, thinking about festivals in Europe um, and thinking about the, the, the situation we are in Europe and of course the question is in open borders, but um, thinking about the possibility um, of creating or of uh, presenting the diversity of uh, cult the cultural diversity inside Europe, which is something that always we assume that there is an enormous diversity of traditions of history and festivals can also maybe present this identity from the 
they um, develop through their own histories, through their own um, um, drawing um, uh, differences in their populations through migration and so on. So um, um, to present a festival in a new city, we also have to um, make a clearer vision about your identity as a festival in your city, in your city, and that we always try to um, um, have different cities be as be as local as possible, because then you have the chance to attract more people from outside, which is a practical reason, but they come to discover something they do not have at all found in their own city, in their own festival. Present something that is really yours, which is really only possible in your city from your history. So you can help to create this vision of, of an enormous diversity of cultures, of, the, of the traditions in Europe, and that might or should help really to understand each other much, much better in Europe, to see if we come from a common ground, but to develop such a lot of uh, extremely different and interesting um, situations between our uh, society and so on. So I think if we have something could you explain to some of your answers, what could also be used in that sense to make a clearer vision of the identity of your place, of your society, of your um, developments. And when it's one part, we do many, many others that together can uh, um, make each other known and bring and plant these identities. That's a very important European kind of uh, responsibility. Great. Um, uh, yeah, Ned, I completely agree. Um, and I think um, it's important to present the, the diversity sort of through the artists and through the communities who are there, but also to think about that um, in a European and in an international way. It reminds me of um, in the, uh, around 2010, I think, the Dublin Theatre Festival uh, presented a season of work from Poland. So the most famous actors from Poland, from Pierre Warszawa and the, the big companies came. And of course, in Dublin, the, the normal theater audience didn't know these companies, but the Polish people who were mostly recent, again, recent economic migrants, working, checking the actors in in the hotel and driving them in taxis, like there were, these were rock stars. These were the most famous actors from television. And so thinking about those communities also how we work internationally, how we bring international artists, where there wasn't necessarily a community of Polish artists working in Dublin then, but there was a Polish audience. Um, and by presenting that work next to like the classic Irish theatre and the new Irish theatre, um, it was a way of presenting the diversity of the city through inviting artists, um, not only presenting what was there already. I, I would like to add one more example. Uh, it's a very uh, simplistic question about the artist. I present a show at the city, uh, and uh, I wrote down several artists from the groups of people. But one is maybe more uh, interesting also for you, and it comes from a private sector, it's a bar. There is a new bar in Brno, and uh, it has really a big impact on nightlife and I can say that it, uh, it, had, uh, it has changed the way of drinking and gastronomy quite in Brno. And now, uh, last year, these people from the bar, the name of the bar is the bar that doesn't exist in Brno, uh, these people uh, are involving more and more to festival, the city festival, and also they, they are organizing their own events and they have also a pop-up bars in the main square in Brno. And this is really maybe a new phenomenon because we are used to um, publicly uh, financed uh, festivals uh, supported by the city or by the government or maybe by some donors, some fundraising. But this, this group of people is really new uh, they have their own money. Uh, they are from entrepreneur field, and they they are um, 
quite strong, very well suited in cities in which uh, I am going to, and so they really love the city, and they can um, work with the citizens very well, and also with the city. So maybe this is maybe just uh, another comment or maybe a new idea. So going a little bit as you say, uh, I was thinking when you passed the questions to us on Thursday, and it was it's really tough for me to uh, get an artist that represents Krakow because Krakow, the culture in Krakow goes through all different fields of of culture. So I could try to think of an actor or an actress, a, a movie actor, or actress, a theater actor, or actress, a musician. And and I realized that one very interesting uh, point to to or like something that represents the soul of the city, as I see it. As you mentioned, I would say it's a spot, a place. Uh, it's rather it's in the very heart of the city, at the main square. There is this palace called in Polish would be under the like in English would be under the rams, pod baranami. And it has it captures the soul of the city in a way that there's there's this club uh, which is also sort of a pub uh, with a very strong uh, musician musical scene. So you it's often you have jazz concerts. The it's very important for for the Polish jazz scene, and I think it cap captures the the soul of the city in a way that jazz is an extremely technical kind of music. So you can have people extremely well educated in terms of music. It gets the older generation, gets the younger generation. You don't have to speak Polish to to listen to jazz. Uh, so it it goes also in the musical scene, but it gets uh, foreigners together because it's very it's in the main market square. So you don't have to really know the the ways to get to this Pod Baranami bar and. In the same building, the same palace, we have an uh, art studio. And so that's why I was trying to think of an artist, uh, but it's tough. So here in this spot, we get younger generation, the traditional Krakow generation. It's this bar, Pod Baranem, is really a reference in, in Poland when it comes to jazz scene. And also, let us say 10 meters away from it, you have an art studio, a movie theater. So it also captures the theater. Part of it having some mainstream production sometimes, so we play on Batman or, or Star Wars they're going to produce, but they also have local, uh, even sometimes movie festivals, so where we have many f movie festivals in the city, so they also have projections of local movies, or uh, once I remember they had like a Portuguese movie uh, festival, so it also captures Again, for being a foreigner and focusing on the other kinds of arts, not only the traditional. So, I agree with you in, the, in this matter that also it's hard to name one artist, and I couldn't think, I, I don't think I could name anyone, but in this spot, it, I guess it's a spot that doesn't capture all of the fields of culture of the city, but it, it really can get like a younger generation, older generation, locals, and foreigners as well, and not being also, and it's it's interesting to see because uh, the city of Krakow is running away from these huge events. Or sometimes it does happen, but we don't want to have our main market square full of huge events the whole time. So it's on the main market square, but still gives the the sense of of some selectiveness towards the audience. So that's that's what I would say. Not an artist, but 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 the spot itself. So. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's reminding me a bit of while we're talking, I'm trying to I'm trying to think what um, who in Malta can be this person, this figure. Um, just to remind you, Malta is tiny, so you can't imagine how small it is. You can't. Um, Malta will fit in London something like 40 times, just to give you an idea. So when you come to think of um, the specificities, uh, even the concept of region, for us, we are not even a region itself, although because of its tininess, so it starts becoming a bit complicated to, to 
uh, think even of an identity, how can such a small, tiny rock in the middle of the Mediterranean have an identity in order to start to speak of who can represent the kind of culture that... But then... Um, then there, the, uh, uh, and this is something that we have been discussing since last year within the context of um, the 70 year um, uh, on of the European Festivals Association. How can we? And one of the things that we were looking at was the specificities of the regions and the festivals that we're speaking about. There are specificities. Malta is a country that got, it in, got its independence in 1964. Um, less than 50 years later is joining Europe, the concept of identity becomes almost a struggle because we, never, we were never on our own, we never governed ourselves, so we didn't have much time to start thinking of who we could be, let alone. So all this, all of a sudden, you start even questioning the concept of what identity am I looking for, who could I be within this context? If you're thinking of be being an artist, when you're so young, young in the, in the sense that we were just born in 1964, so relatively very young, um, what can I do that represent the area from where I come? So we imitated a lot, we imitated everything everywhere. Of course, we were colonized for a long time, so... And recently we start seeing those artists that start coming up with but even there, we have to pay a lot of attention because there are sometimes even pseudo cultures that emerge that you're thinking that you are doing something, but in reality, you're just imitating. But then the city that is going to sign tomorrow, Birgu, who my colleague is representing, has a small restaurant over there who is trying to give an authentic experience of what could be um, the taste of the islands we live in. It's done very subtly, no big um, announcements about this. It's a commercial venture, but yes, you go there and you're offered an experience of the tastes uh, of our island. And when you go, it's interesting because you kind of recognize them these days, maybe from when we're young. Um, but they are being offered as an experience, not as a statement. You go there. And you, you live it for a while. And I always think that um, one of the things that maybe as a, as a, a region, an island, um, we could look for is right, uh, trying to, to search. And I feel that we have a lot of young artists that are, that are trying to do it. What could be possibly um, a sense of who we are? Because it's, go it's going to be very difficult, for, for instance, for us, because we're so tiny that we uh, establish an identity based on who we all could be. So we're, and I, I'm, I'm mentioning this small restaurant, which for me is a cultural experience, whether it's artistic or not, that I think will we'll need to, because even that, will, it needs to, but I think it's giving a sense of who one could be through. Okay. I'm not, I wasn't going to say anything. No, I, from what you are saying, um, unlike Mario saying, it's very, very difficult for us to pinpoint. I mean, in small Malta yet, we have big international artists like Joseph Kalea. We have the leader of the London Symphony Orchestra, who's Maltese, Carmine Lauri. So, but they don't represent who we are as an, as an identity. I'm, obviously, Malta is made up of many identities in itself, even though we're tiny. Um, but I, I would mention, again, going on to a rap artist, um, and his name is John Malia, who has given us, I think, a sense of us as a country rather than as a city. Um, and he brings up very local, very, I think, um, humorous and maybe sarcastic, sarcastic um, I don't know, <laughs> references to who we are, how we think as a, as, a, as a nation, as Malta. I think he's the closest we come to as this representation. But again, we have many, um, uh, not many, but we have some 
um, yeah, good aspiring whatever street artists and. But but I think that in our case they're not really well known. It's still kind of emerging in a sense, and the sense of obviously migration. We live in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, so um, yeah, we come as well. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, I don't know. I think there's there's also a lot of racism in Malta because we look north to Europe instead of looking around the Mediterranean, and um, many a time kind of trying to um, look for cohesion. But um, we are also, I would say, um, have a really important project we work on with Festival d'Exon Provence, which brings together emerging artists in the Mediterranean, um, a network called Medinea. It's the incubator of emerging artists in the Mediterranean. And I think it's a really perfect example of the region of the Mediterranean, where people with their own cultures, their own um, their own way, um, you are saying they're not taught artists. So, kind of the the people from the so-called the westernized the Western countries of the Mediterranean. So, basically, Europe um, come with traditions of um, yeah teaching Western music, and the Arab, the Middle East come with their own traditions. Sometimes not taught, but. Um, there's, we have a, a fantastic mentor, um, Fabrizio Cansol, who brings them together and through their um, own, very, very own identities of traditions. Aha, uh -huh, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but he's an exception. He's from Brussels, but he's Mediterranean in character, I would say, Fabrizio. He's a very special person. And he mentors them and um, they come together with their own expressions and makes this new um, music and just seeing all these young Mediterranean artists coming together, it's something we should aspire to be. It's just a very touching and emotional. <laughs> That's it. Uh, just a short, short remark. Um, I think uh, all these um, examples, um, let me um, come back to me as a question. I think it's absolutely necessary to know for whom you do program. What, for whom do you a festival? Okay. Whom do you want to yes. address? Whom do you want to touch? I think that is the first question for every festival, especially regarding the idea of artists and art local uh, identity questions. Whom do you want to find as people you can address, touch? Um, find as friends for the future. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was building on this question of uh, identity, uh, representing. Um, I think what we hear, the, all the examples, is first of all the difficulty. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would have the same question about a country, you probably would answer much more easily. So the, the, the real thing is, of course, that, that uh, identifying a city is always failing. Uh, it is failing because it's as opposed to fixed or traditional identities. Uh, uh, and, and cities are always uh, decentered uh, from that. So I think a very important element of urban festivals is that they function as a living lab. Uh, and not as a so as a proposal of of a possible identity, a possible future, uh, but not uh, representing as a country would do. Uh, uh, one of the uh, I was a few weeks ago at the World Urban Forum in Katowice. Uh, uh, that was World Urban Forum was opened by global. Uh, institutions and by the national government of Poland. And then what was shown as the artistic representation was some traditional dances. Had nothing to do nor with urbanity nor with Katowice. Uh, and so the fact that, that Dublin uh, uh, is proposed here by uh, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, basically uh, and not with 
uh, what we would, let's say, identify as Irish. Okay. So my, my real point, I want to think, is that, that as opposed to nationality, urbanity is something else. And, and if I may say something about soul of Europe, and, and uh, I really do think that for Europe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I really do think that what is specif specifying Europe is urbanity. It's the only continent in history where, let's say, the national, the, the, the local bourgeoisie uh, has won over nobility and clergy. And that opened up free science, free arts, uh, uh, separation between religion and the state, which is not fully uh, realized, of course. But that, that movement towards freedom in a certain way was in the urban, in the post-medieval uh, uh, urbanity uh, uh, of Europe. And I think one of the problems for Europe is that it is a club of nation states uh, uh, and not a network of cities. Uh, Europe should be much better off as a continent, uh, as a network of cities, than just as, a, uh, as, a, as, as national governments uh, meeting with each other. Uh, and so, well, that is my really, uh, uh, let's say, proposal, is to uh, distinguish very clearly urban culture and urban festivals as opposed to national uh, culture and national festivals, etc. The two are existing, uh, they are absolutely existing, but they cannot be merged. Uh, you cannot, you can have a national festival in a city, but that is not an urban festival. You just mentioned, now it's a grand design, I don't know if we'll get there, but yes, I'm and what I find extremely important there is this idea that festivals and regions um, uh, give this sense of, um, I don't want to say represent, they, they shape, map the territory, I think, in a more um, relevant way than um, nation, national borders map territory. And if um, this can help us to uh, the, the FSE with the concept of regions and festivals can help us to uh, push this forward, I think it's a, it's, it's a very positive, very relevant, I suppose. Just a short remark again. I think what makes it difficult today, I, I agree, of course, with you, but um, our societies have changed so much. I mean, the mixture of societies nearly everywhere with migration, with all these movements around the world, of course, changed also the soul of regions, of rural areas, even of rural areas, more of course in cities. So I think um, to um, think about festivals, how, what use can we make of festivals for everything we want to, to happen, uh, of course has to build on this extremely quickly changing societies all over. So we have to find a new basis for understanding each other and what do we want to present in a festival locally, regionally, or even nationally. I agree national festivals for me are not interesting anymore. But how to react on these changes, I think that is something festivals have to seriously think about every year anew because it changes again and again. So this is for me a big question for festivals. Yes, one of the questions we heard yesterday was how do you relate to, to citizens? Uh, my answer to that is do not relate to citizens as a public, as a potential public for your festival, but as a co-productive, as co-producers of the festival. And that's, I mean, so you have to take out the production of festivals out of the artistic sector, if, if I may be radical uh, in a certain way, because the artistic sector is in fact marginal to societal expression. And so what we have to do is to put artists in charge of trying to, uh, to, to co-produce with the context, with the environment. And I mean, maybe I can say some words on, on the way we prepare Brussels 2030. It's eight years before that the government said 
let's have a, a bit to do that. In fact, having it or not having it is, uh, is secondary in a certain way. It's the process to it. And just to few words, just that, but Brussels, 1.2 million inhabitants. In the last 20 years, 1.5 million people arrived in Brussels, which means that in 20 years' time, this whole population has in fact changed. Uh, and the original are going to the, to the periphery, are moving, but a city is, is a, a thing that moves constantly, and you cannot fix it, you cannot... Moreover, Belgium is a country where two nations are in the making. Uh, in the north, the Flemish, in the south, the French-speaking. And in Brussels, they have their institutions. So there is not, not a Brussels school system. There's a Flemish one in Brussels and a French-speaking one. There is a French-speaking cultural center and a Flemish one. And so trying to make, to present Brussels as the capital uh, of Europe culturally, because it is already the capital, uh, uh, in fact, needs to break away from the institutional representation. We only can prepare that bit if we make, and the cultural sector is of course organized, that artists getting their money from one community or the other community. So we need to prepare the artistic sector to tell another story than that they are telling every year within their institutional organization. And so decentering the arts and culture from their original position to, to tell something that is not yet there is in fact, and so the, what we want to, to become in fact is a cultural reference for Europe and not only a one year reference, but combining Brusselitude, Brusselness, uh, which is this hybrid inter interculture and relate that to Europeanness, whatever that may mean. And I think that is a, a whole sector that is not really worked on because we really think culturally international connection, intercultural. Uh, the question is not diversity. The question is how do we live together on the basis of diversity? And, and I think that is a real challenge. We don't have an answer. Uh, to that. And, uh, for me, that's the challenge of, of cultural practices. I'll be brief. Um, I'm just a habitant of a small, of a town near Brussels. And uh, what I always see is that I think cities have the responsibility to create a fertile soil for young people, of course, for the inhabitants in order to create culture. And I see it a lot of missing. Um, to give an example, in my town, there was this old industrial building and someone had the idea, there's nothing happening here, it's boring, let's bring people together and let's make something out of it. And it was a complete art scene that popped up from older people, from younger people, people working in fashion, theater, and it created a complete new environment. They connected with local economy and then all of a sudden, of course, the old industrial building had to be teared down because of new real estate, new buildings that had to be built. So that structure, that bare bone that was built up by that one guy was just taken, ripped apart, and now it's back to square one. So if we talk about uh, inclusion, if we talk about identity, if we want to know what our identity is, like Malta, I think you need indeed diversify from what is an artist and look at your people in your city and I heard it co-produce and this is for me as a viewer something that is very important. A very short remark again <laughs> to you. I think I, I agree but um, I think we should not give artists uh, a task. We should follow their ideas because very often artists are much more ahead of us with their possibilities to express things we are just trying to find. So believe in the artistic creativity and use it instead of making them smaller by giving them a certain task for us. So follow the artist and therefore I think the question who, who are these artists is quite important and to find out where they are and to really see what they can give us.
Um, yeah, we, sh we should go on, but I think we are going on quite well. Uh, but I, I have a question maybe for city representatives. Uh, we, we hear a lot about the, um, how to say that, sometimes civil society representatives saying we should do this and that and this is, but how, how do you do when you are into a local government where you have uh, plenty of uh, festival happening uh, each year and how do you, uh, how to say that, not only make a choice about uh, what will be the size of the piece of cake we will give to this festival, but rather how to bring them somewhere you think you have to go. So how, how do you manage the, the festivals at, at, at the policy level, if you manage? So did, did you understand my question? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> so maybe I can start. Uh, I think the, the idea and the, this event of the FSEO here is just as where it should be when it comes to Krakow because we are actually undergoing together with the EFA and now coming here. We are working on a way that we would like actually to do a strategy for festivals of the city of Krakow. Krakow is a city that has around, uh, when it comes to inhabitants, around, around one million. And I'm speaking figures before the outbreak of the war right after it raised by 25%, and I don't really have the latest figures because many of the Ukrainian community stayed in Krakow, many went back, so I really don't know, but let's say that the, the overall figure is around one million inhabitants in the city of Krakow plus immediate venicity. So that's the first point. Second point, for this size city, we have around 80 festivals, between 80 and 100 festivals, going from bigger festivals to totally local festivals, from poetry, literature festivals, music, uh, theater, uh, uh, street uh, theater, street performance festivals, so we have all of it. So actually, uh, and I speak a little bit personally uh, as well, that now getting into it, we can see that actually we can, I think if you ask for like a typical Krakowian citizen, he would say, oh, this is a city of literature, this is a city of music, this is a city of theater, uh, but never from the uh, festival point of view. So only the discipline. So okay, we, that's a city of literature because we have poets, writers, and literature festivals. This is a city of music because we have musicians, the philharmonic, different other uh, concert halls, and, but no one says this is a city of festivals. That's something that we are trying to implement. We are taking the bigger view and say, actually, we have lots of festivals, focus either on literature to our local, so eventually part of them are going to be more with more Polish language, more of them like more international guests, uh, translation in English. And the city of Krakow now is working in the Department of Culture. We are working on getting, and here that's why we are for as well, to get to know how we can make them complete each other. So that's, we don't have the feeling, we don't want to create the feeling of, okay, you go to this festival or the other, you can actually go both. And from the organizer point of view, it's also how can we help each other's festival, although we have eventually sometimes similar theme, uh, how can we help to create this feeling that Krakow is a city of festivals from the festival point of view, and how we can actually make the festivals communicate. So this is uh, trying to answer to your question, like we also try to answer to our question. So I guess in, this, in the case of Krakow, that's, that's, uh, that's what we're searching for, a tool uh, that it will be able to make the festivals to, to collaborate. Actually we had, the city of Krakow has, uh, we have this Krakow Culture Lab where we, invite experts to take part on, on a conversation and debate that goes on on our platform. <coughs> Sorry. And the last uh, recording was with Ms. Deventa. So we invited her also to speak about the FSEO and we invited some representatives of uh, di programming direct directors or artist directors from Krakow Festival. So we all know we all exist. We all know that 
the directors, the people who actually related to festivals, we all know the importance of festivals to the city. And now what we are trying to find is this, to write down and build this strategy, how we can make those festivals one, all together. Uh, we all understand that's already part of our identity somehow, but not from the perspective uh, part. And also, of course, take into consideration uh, everything related to, to the sustainable development. So also it's not like we only care about ourselves. We want to make it more sustainable. And we started the review of how to address these festivals with the pandemic somehow. I mean, we didn't start, but it kind of uh, accelerated everything. So how can we focus how, like, before the pandemic, the uh, festivals, lots of people, let's take it, let's sell, sell, sell. And I actually, that's what we actually want, or can we do something more? Calm the city, kind of slow down a little bit. And uh, another important thing, and here also a little bit, uh, I have to say from, from and it, that's an open question. Uh, and uh, again, personally, I'm from Sao Paulo, multi-ethnic multi city, and I heard the, the example of, of Dublin or Malta. Krakow is still not as multi-ethnic as Sao Paulo, Dublin, or Malta, but uh, with this huge, huge wave of refugees, we are, the festivals year, this year are somehow, of course, last minute, we had to be prepared to include the Ukrainian minorities by inviting artists, by giving them space, but again, we don't know, as it's still going on, we don't know what the ship is gonna take. So, from the city part, uh, from the city perspective, uh, I'll leave it with this open question. We are trying to moderate, to create the strategies uh, for festivals to communicate and for the citizens of Krakow to understand. That's actually a thought policy of the city. That's not like, okay, it's happening, the city is giving money for some festivals because we have, the city has selected uh, festivals, some festivals that are going to be financed for the next five years. So it's not just giving them, like, but okay, what are you going to do with this money? How are we going to manage? How we can make Krakow more interesting for you, citizens of Krakow, as well as for people who come to Krakow? So that's, I guess, I'll leave with this open question, and that's what we are working on. Uh, and together with the FSU, I guess that's actually the, the right timing. Unfortunately, because of the war also, but uh, on the other hand, like, uh, it turns on the light for us that we have to take into consideration other things, that we have to be ready for things that we actually wouldn't expect, right? We start breathing again after the, COVID, the hardest time of COVID, then bang, we have another, another uh, blow in our, in our city in public finance and, and integration, which is something very important. So that's, that's what I would say from Krakow. Thank you, Gorgon, <laughs> for being the Zoom person. <laughs> and th thanks for the, the comment, uh, Meredith. Um, Nella, you want? No? I think that brings us in a way to something which thought could also be a question. Um, and answering you, uh, reacting on you, um, is it also a, a necessity or a, something a festival should create? together with the city, a meeting place, apart from the places where you hear music or see theater or something else, a meeting place for meeting international artists with local artists, meeting uh, civil society audiences with their with, uh, artists, meeting uh, political representatives, uh, parliamentarians, uh, and so on, with citizens. All these possibilities then also to have a place where you can um, freely and openly talk about a festival, what should it be for your city, but also 
for doing more than just for the festival, but create a kind of understanding in your city between different social groups, between migrants and uh, locals. So I think this idea of a meeting place is something very important, which could also go on during the year, not just during a festival, but a festival could create it. And then questions that have just been raised could be discussed in a meeting between different parts uh, of uh, locals, international people, and so on. So um, do you have, um, does it exist somewhere, a place where you can go and know? I, I, uh, many years ago, also in the context of um, Soul for Europe, we were in Belgrade in the period when there was no government. And the Dutch um, government um, invested some money uh, to have a meeting there. And um, we um, uh, had a, a lot of talks between um, stu mostly young generation students and uh, some uh, citizens. At that time, they needed a visa to leave the country, and none of them had been outside um, their own country. And uh, we brought some uh, commissioners, some parliamentarians, and uh, some citizens from other cities, and they learned for the first time there's a free, the possibility of a free speech, a free dialogue. It created a new movement in Belgrade, uh, which then went to the more or less then responsible city representatives, and they created, uh, again with some Dutch money, a place in Belgrade near the river, uh, which still exists as a meeting place, not just uh, for talks, but also for art and music and so on. It still exists, and it changed according to what they tell us. It changed a lot of um, the uh, atmosphere in Belgrade because people knew I can go there, I might meet a politician, an artist, a friend, and uh, it showed us again how important <coughs> these places are for cities created maybe through or with the help of a festival. So the question, do you have those places? Uh, do you think it would be great to have it? Can you, with your city, with your mayors, maybe uh, decide to build something like that? The term that Nele used re uh, reminds me of one comment by uh, Shepard, yes, in the beginning, uh, because you said that in your context, uh, uh, you, you, you put the, the, the emphasis on artists who just get out of their, their environment from the festivals, which, which, which means certain exclusivity, and they do their works in the city, yes, because indeed festivals are various. So some, some festivals, especially the very classical, very conventional festivals, uh, everywhere in Europe are uh, exclusive, and that's legitimate. So the they high charges, uh, high prices, and, and, and very top level uh, services and catering, everything. However, what we are talking about increasingly is festivals as meeting places. This is the term that you used. That is something which which is a very important function of European festivals, which I'm very much fond of, when they bring together people who anywhere or who otherwise wouldn't meet from different parts of the city or from the society, and not necessarily free festivals, even if they are, if they are for charge, they, they can, if they, if they really uh, uh, aim to it, create, uh, fora that has become meeting places for, for, for various segments of the society. But uh, if, if you don't mind, then, and I have got, uh, and I have the mic. Now, it, it worked for Gorgon, but it doesn't work for me. Maybe. Gergen, can you help me again? Gergen is the Armenian Siri. Well, it's total failure, so then I, 
I, I, I give up for a while. But there is one more slide which I, which I want to, to uh, present to you. Okay. Yeah, maybe we will come back uh, later on the slide when Gorgon will be back. So maybe we can reopen, try to reopen the floor to cities. Huh? And to, so would you like to comment this notion of um, um, meeting festivals as meeting spaces? How do you manage also the, the variety of, of um, festivals in, in your city? And what sense do you give to that? I could, but it's... Maybe it's from a different perspective, because I work for the municipality. We aim to, we aim at uh, maybe broader goals. We also uh, very much look on in how can culture uh, contribute to fulfilling these goals. What is the role of culture in yeah, enhancing social inclusion, um, in other social affairs, in maybe uh, declining poverty, in uh, trying to beat loneliness among lots of people in our community. So that's much. That's very much my perspective. This Congress, I'm trying to learn how festivals and municipalities and local government can interact on that, and how can I play a role without uh, damaging the artistic freedom that festivals have. So. And yeah, and we in Leeuwarden, uh, we have lots of experience with festivals. We've got all kinds of festivals. It's very small festivals in villages, free festivals, but also very big festivals where thousands of people come and enjoy music and theater and all kinds of stuff. And yeah, um, we're still trying to learn in how we can use all those different festivals. Use is a bit of nas is a nasty word, but how we can work together in oh yeah, fulfilling these goals and yeah um, if festivals want to play a part in that they can yeah, uh, try and get a, a, a financial injection from the municipality and now we see very interesting things happening in the water for instance a festival called welcome to the village which is a, which really creates a sort of small living lab and tries to enhance all kinds of um, yeah, problems of our uh, tries to find a solution for uh, lots of problems that are um, no, yeah, are uh, problems that are uh, in so all kinds of problems in society um, and trying to before all, enhance uh, sustainable uh, sustainable development so, yeah, that's that's more that's our our uh, uh, yeah, needs are for the festival. That kind of is a bit clear what I'm trying to say. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think in Bergen we have a very open dialogue with the festivals and the artistic life in the city. Uh, but we aim to uh, to keep an arm and length distance to the to the artistic uh, expressions. Um, we, since we do not run the festivals ourselves, um, and we are not supposed to, we uh, work to uh, process grants uh, to festivals who who work sustainably and uh, facilitate diversity in the organizations and the, in the programming. Um, in addition, we uh, invite them into um, projects which we coordinate. Um, and there we can continue the dialogue on what's the need for this city and what can we create. Because festivals in Bergen I think they are really good at uh, using um, the urban spaces in the city. Um, they can create festivals in narrow streets where families live. Um, they can create uh, festivals in different parks and uh, in different areas. And as a municipality, we have to open these areas for them. And um, yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. But is it is it the dialogue or do you finance festivals? And when do you finance them? Yeah, they they um, apply for grants mostly, and some of them get yearly grants if they are. Yeah. It's well the integrated. Same really well. Yeah. Maybe sometimes when our uh, uh, the agenda of the municipality is very much controlled by a topic, for instance, uh, a social topic. Uh, last year was like uh, beating loneliness for a lot of people. If they make a good apply for that, they can get some extra money to, uh, to take it, to, um, to realize that in their program, in their festival. Yeah. Is that sort like? Well, uh, we have tried to um, it's not we are not asking them to artistically uh, express any kind of topic um, because that's the distance we have to keep, but uh, it's more pra practically that um, yeah. Um, if they aim to, um, of course, it's not. We can't command them to have have more diversity in the organization. But it's um, we want them kind of to think about it. So it's it's not something that we ask them to do. If you do this, you get money because we are not uh, the ones who can control that. Uh, but um, I guess it's the political uh, will that is um, expressed. Yeah. I mean, there's an interesting point coming up. I think. Um, uh, I think the we're hearing these sort of these two poles. One of which is what's being proposed here in Leverden, but then also Nela's point earlier about uh, make like asking the artists what they want to do and I think um, sometimes there's this tension about um, it's not as reductive as this but about like needing artists to be social workers and the, you know the reason justifying funding art through other social functions rather than funding art uh, as this kind of laboratory for the things that you haven't thought of yet you know, and that actually the, the the funding for culture is not about funding these narrow uh, these these the you know to to just fit with the agendas, but actually it's this laboratory to discover the things that other parts of civil society haven't discovered yet. Perhaps if I can say something about, again, my colleague, I come from Malta as well, and uh, similar to Mario and Davinia. And just as uh, Mario began by explaining where we come from, okay, it, it, in terms of, of Birgu, uh, it is even a small place in this small place. So the inhabitants are around 3,000 and individuals. It's an aging population, but it is a, a relatively old city which has two names, so it is called Birgu, yes, but then with the Knights of Malta, that was called Vittoriosa, the victorious city after the Great Siege. Uh, we always feel the need to, to preface and explain where we're coming from. Uh, so in a sense, this also ties in with uh, the activity, with the, the events and the festivals that the city does. So rather than festivals, uh, it's more concerned with activities, a number of events that occur during the year. Most of these are not uh, centrally organized. There is the local council, yes, and I am here officially representing the local council, but again, I am more of an outsider. I am from Birgu, I was born in Birgu, so I'm relatively a rare species in Birgu because people are moving out because now they're finding it too expensive to live in Birgu. The, after the, the Second World War, there was uh, people moved out because it was uh, one of the uh, heavily bombed areas in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Malta. So, which ties on also to the invisible in, in inhabitants. So, so in terms of uh, the events that are organized uh, and, and the spaces, it is all about the spaces, the streets, 
it tries to draw attention to uh, the the identity of the place, whether it's the the buildings of of the Knights of Malta or the uh, Palace of the Inquisition or the uh, uh, the, the British um, some British spaces, uh, the shelters and the the fortifications. So all these spaces, whether it's the, the castle or the, the the palace or the streets or uh, I would say the ditch in uh, which has the the air raid shelters in it. These are all places that are inhabited during the, these, these these events. So in addition to where we come from, it is also where we do our activities. That is also very central, always tying into to the um, identity. In terms of funding, again, uh, I think ever since Malta joined the the EU, there is always now that that avenue that you can apply for that kind of funding but again there are these various mechanisms in, in Malta where you need to apply and sometimes places like Birgu would feel disadvantaged in terms because they do not have the know-how and the expertise of uh, applying for those funds so that's why like my colleagues Mario and Davinia are doing good work in that regard because they in fact, I am here thanks to them because they invited the, uh, the, the mayor of Vittorios and he took the initiative to, to invite me and therefore to represent that. Um, Can I add, sorry, from Krakow perspective, I think it's also important to mention that uh, many festivals are happening in the uh, very center of the city, which is a UNESCO heritage site. So festivals, we actually have to take into consideration all the facts, of, uh, factors that were mentioned before. So we have people living there, we have buildings that are uh, architectural pearls, and they cannot be much adapted to no modern technology in order to provide whatever the, the, the devices we need for such festivals. So we, have, we take this into consideration as well, so how can we communicate with the local architecture of 18th century. So it's not, again, a venue. We do have two big venues that are often used for festivals. One is an arena where you can have matches and big concerts. The other is a congress center, but many of the festivals are actually located in places in the old town. And I think here, from the Krakow perspective, uh, from the perspective of Krakow, I would like to mention two or three festivals, some are the movie festivals that I mentioned, that they're happening actually those uh, uh, arts uh, movie theaters. So it's a festival that you can go either to the Spot Baranami that I answered on the previous question, but you have other art movie theaters that you can attend, so it's a little bit spread, like still center, but not that, that inner center. Also, because it happens on the summer, so we are able to put, the, the organizers are able to put some screening by the boulevard next to the river. So it also gives this, let's be, let's be outside and, and if the weather is good, uh, we are able to watch and there are screenings of three or four movies during the weekend. So that's another way of connecting with the local community. You don't have to be an expert, graduate from, from the Wuch uh, Academy of Movie to understand you just, I want to watch a movie. There's some, some screening of French movies with the captions. I'll just sit by the river coming back from, from my work on a bicycle, right? So it gives actually this feeling. And the other one I think is very interesting to, to mention is one of the most traditional and most important festivals in Krakow is the Jewish Culture Festival. It happens, obviously, it's on the Jewish part of the city and involves all the all great majority of institutions that somehow are there. So we have talks with produ producers, movie producers, writers, uh, Jewish the heritage from, from Second World War, scholars and in libraries and bookstores and synagogues and museums. So it's, I think this Jewish uh, cultural festival, it's, it pictures very well the space, how we can, because you are literally in the Jewish part. So you have, whenever you attend this festival, if you're going only for a concert in the synagogue, or if you're going to, to meet a writer writing about Jewish uh, culture, you literally leave the place and you're inside the place that's breathing this, this culture itself. And also it's very focused on Krakow. So it's, it's about bringing the Jewish culture and the Jewish heritage 
to uh, a city important for the Polish heritage as well. And to, again, talking and gathering people from all over the world. So I think if there's a foreigner visiting Krakow for whatever reason, it might be interesting. Actually, there's not only a Jewish quarter, but actually I can go and try to see a Polish-Israeli co-production of a movie or, or take part in a debate that talks about, I don't know, Jewish diaspora to the United States or anything else. So I think also from the city perspective, we try to promote, uh, when we finance our festivals, we try to include also this this question. We cannot say, oh, you have to promote this, we, we have to keep this distance, but we can take into consideration, okay, this festival, uh, this festival includes uh, or has in the uh, agenda inclusion, social inclusion, or it's more available for the whole public and so on. And here the question more is, our dilemma is, how much can we still stick on financing and supporting festivals that they already have the, their name, so eventually they, it could be easier for them to find financing from other sources. But on the other hand, they are, they're, so they're important from, for us, but how much also can we start financing uh, initiatives from locals to a new festival? And here, that's a tricky question for the most that idea might be great, the lack of these operational skills could have turn out that the festival is going to be one year edition only and then it just will not move forward. So, because also the city cannot, okay, we're going to finance and we have to provide expertise and we have to do this. So that's that's the risky part, I guess, of a festival. So that's it from Krak, I guess. Um, I would like to come back to the question of a meeting place, especially also in the context of ECOX for, as an example. Um, we know for many years that in many cases ECOX have uh, not really been um, created by their own citizens, but very often by strange people coming into the city. So there was not uh, a very common um, a love for that program because locals or regional artists and societies felt a bit um, left uh, out. So um, I remember a very positive example in uh, Guimarães, Portugal. They created such a meeting, sp a meeting place uh, quite in, uh, before the um, creation of the ECOG. And uh, they even developed an interesting example. They uh, promised the uh, citizens and local artists a certain amount of the budget. And they gave them the task to uh, propose projects um, and um, present them to the uh, to the directors or to the city, and the project that had the most votes for it uh, got that um, little budget. So people were very active, uh, creating ideas, and on top of that, communicating between each other because they wanted to um, to find more uh, persons to to propose with them the same project. I think, and um, in Guimarães, um, unfortunately, um, as in many places, in the end, the, the mayor then decides against it and choosing again a famous stranger to a foreign person to present uh, projects. So it didn't last. But at least it, for a moment, for the preparation of the Eco Guimarães, it did a great job to include the city and its citizens and the local artists. So it's a simple project, but it shows uh, how a meeting place um, can really help um, to include um, citizens into ideas of a city. And I think it's very important for mayors and cities to support these places because it helps also a city uh, to do the right things in preparation of big events. Yes, exactly. That's co-production instead of just meeting because one of the things of there is a lot of festivity which is there's nothing wrong with that people meeting each other but as such meeting is not necessarily productive uh, I think that there should be much more attention to coaching the meeting in a certain way if you want uh, social cohesion or uh, solidarity or uh, some other goals to come out of it. Just meeting each other, being together, is not necessarily productive. And, and to build on what Nela said, is, yes, I mean, what we are 
now doing is three uh, uh, three fields of preparation of so it's not yet the program it's not the program what we are doing is on the one hand a youth trajectory towards a youth parliament on what the cultural capital uh, should become uh, secondly we have what we call futures places where uh, temporary use uh, uh, in uh, in buildings, we try to make coalitions of artists, artistic sectors, schools, uh, cultural centers, uh, uh, etc. So all people busy with social reproduction, and to orient them to uh, ecosystemic transition, social uh, inclusion, and intercultural contact, which is the three main challenges for all uh, the cities. And the third is. Uh, collective imagination. Uh, uh, if Brussels is not the capital of Belgium anymore, is not a bi-communitarian, three quarters of the population are coming from elsewhere, so are not Walloons of Flemish. So that story is absolutely uh, past in fact, but we have to reinvent what uh, this hybrid expression is. Uh, and. Well, just to, 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 to close then, a closing remark is on, on the artists. Yes, I agree. I mean, art is free, art is, but not all artists are good enough for the urban project. And so one of the things is, of course, the capacity of urban leaders to have their own vision. You have to facilitate all creativity, not only artistic, but also research and connections between Let's say the research uh, uh, institutions and arts should be developed, I think, in much more in cities because they are too, too many times they are uh, in silos. And the second thing is, of course, then you have to make your selection uh, of those who are uh, in transition, uh, responding to the ecosystemic challenges, responding to social inequality, and not all arts and not all festivals have to do that, of course. That is not my, my point. But you should not say that all the artistic uh, activities are urban, because that's the subject here. What is an urban festival? So to become urban, you should be something else than just creative. Um, I think it's also interesting to think about the festival not only as something in itself, but as a kind of public moment for this lab. Um, sometimes, and I think sometimes the festival actually can suck up a lot of oxygen and take all of the attention from the ongoing work. Um, I, when I um, took over the Cork Midsummer Festival, which is in the second city in Ireland um, 10 years ago, um, my predecessor had had a kind of interesting provocation, which he didn't do and I didn't do, but was really useful to think about, which is like Cork is quite a small city. There are many weeks of the year where there is not anything interesting on to go and see. The festival was presenting about 50 projects. Um, what if we just got rid of the festival and presented one interesting project every week for the year? Then you'd have like a really interesting year of culture um, uh, without having to focus everything into one moment. Um, and that became an interesting dialogue. The other, um, uh, just thinking about ECOX uh, and the kind of ongoing project, and uh, you know, as we know, so many of the ECOX end in chaos and disaster. Um, I worked a little on the Dublin bid um, the last time it was in Ireland, which wasn't selected. But the, the city um, council and the uh, arts office made a commitment that they would try and uh, achieve as many of the projects as possible. And so used the, the one million euro um, that had been in the budget to do the second uh, round of the bid book to set up a new culture company um, to do these kinds of socially engaged projects in the city and actually being able to do those projects without having to have an ECOC to make everyone fall out and fight and suck up all the attention. Um, and just the third point, um, also about this year-round thing, um, in Reykjavik, the Reykjavik Arts Festival, um, 
was cancelled uh, due to COVID in 2020, but they decided not to cancel the festival. They decided that they would present all of the projects in the festival whenever they could. So they announced the festival without dates. And then during the year, every single project that had been programmed in the festival. Um, so kind of all of those things are about, I think, thinking about the festival as this public moment, but actually the festival as a context for year-round activity in the city. And I think if it's not doing that, um, it might not be working to its full potential. Uh, I think, I think it doesn't work. <laughs> this one does, yes. It's time to wrap up, uh, Nicola, uh, that part. And then, after a few minutes, it will be uh, Jeroen's time. And in the meantime, you can look at the, at the, the site, which I didn't manage to produce earlier. It's about the dilemmas of cities that, that Carlos was talking, how to treat festivals. That is, again, uh, the, the issues prepared for the consultation. And, and yes, and this is, I already jumped to the to the answer where the of the items which were the most privileged by uh, the people that that we we approached for the consultation so still funding which is which seems to be the the most uh, common uh, way of uh, of helping festivals uh, but also, interestingly, a connection to tourism was raised in, in the circle <coughs> who participated in our, uh, in, in our uh, consultation. What has been the current topic today and always is maintaining dialogue. That was the third item which appeared important. And now, back to you, Nicolas, to, to wrap up. Um. Well, I will try to... We, we wanted to ask alumni to do that, but uh, I don't know if they were aware of that, but... <laughs> no? Okay. Um, now, maybe briefly, I think for me, what, what was fascinating is to see when we started talking about artists, that yesterday we visited some museums with big names, important names from Yerevan, but it was more in, in the view of artists represent, from the past representing the city, and we talked today of street art uh, artists, of, uh, we talked of uh, rap music, and the, the, you talk of those uh, uh, black Irish artists. Um, so in, it's in, and, and you talk also about venues, spaces, finally, not artists, but rather spaces where life, uh, cultural life happens. And uh, we did not talk about classical music, for example. So. Uh, it, it's quite challenging, maybe, for classical music to be representing again um, the, the soul of the, of the city, uh, somehow. Um, and then it was also interesting to, uh, I wrote about, uh, about Malta, not about the, about the identity of Malta, what could be the essence of the city, not what it is, but what it could be. So somehow the festival, maybe, and culture is a way to create this new essence or to search after this new identity uh, or, or essence. Um, and, and then, yeah, we heard a lot about the cities, of course, and because basically we are here to talk about cities and festivals and that cities are, are also changing a lot, as Eric mentioned, for Brussels, but for other many cities and how finally uh, the cities are not fixed, uh, they are not uh, stuck into they, 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 the, the population is changing so much and, and festivals are not always changing uh, as, as quickly as the population does. So how can, it's quite challenging for festivals also to adapt themselves. And some festivals, I know festivals that are 100 years, eh? and now the challenge is how you're not a festival from the last century, but for, for, for now. Um, also, the, this question of uh, how, how do you do with the variety, um, with the vibrancy 
uh, of, of, of the, the festival scenes. And it was interesting to hear also your dialogue about how you, you manage that trying, of course money is always somewhere at the center. It's quite an incentive uh, to bring people where you would like them to be. Um, but also uh, the way you can ask question to festival and how do you manage this topic how do you manage this issue um, it's it's i think this this uh, dialogue is is something we could talk for hours because i don't know if there are good solutions uh, in between the dialogue because we know that uh, festival organizers expect for money for more money maybe sometimes for spaces but rather money and then uh, and, and then the cities have a, a policy they want to implement and how do you do you do with uh, this festival? And then we talk of meeting yeah? and, and meeting spaces, the important to create maybe temporary or yearly spaces for citizens to meet, to meet artists also, which often they, they don't meet that much. And how our festival not only maybe a, a short term um, project or a short term event, but maybe as you mentioned, it, I mean, it's not always it can be a yearly event somehow, which what is the difference with a theater, for example? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's, it's because it's not about walls, maybe it's because of uh, the, where it happens. Uh, you mentioned Birgu and the, this importance of uh, being in the public space or in Krakow, the importance also of, um, of creating temporary uh, meeting spaces. Uh, this is maybe the role of the festival for a city, being a, a meeting space. Yeah, thank you. I think we could have gone on for long, but we don't have enough time. Uh, we have many more questions. Uh, we didn't talk about sustainability, about climate, about uh, the war, about all these things, but uh, we didn't have much time. So I think it was, in, in any case, it was a dialogue. Uh, dialogue is what we want, what we want to push and to support all over and if you got this idea about the necessity of meeting people, of meeting even in small groups to talk to each other then I think it's something we wanted to achieve. So that's up to you. Okay, thank you. Um, just checking the presentation. Thank you. So I'll start to introduce myself. Um, my name is Jeroen Verast. Thank you for the very interesting workshop for the presentation of the FA seal. Um, I have the impression that I can only tell a smart part, small part of, of, uh, of what we do. Uh, after participating in this workshop, I realize cities and regions have many challenges and I can only uh, explain a small part on what we do in Belgium uh, with the technical platform and it's mainly about communication so um, my role within public uh, the, the non-profit organization where I work for uh, is mainly connect with partners that want to use several of our services uh, we have three main core services that I will explain and one of these partners is Festival Finder, uh, festivalfinder.eu, the city story uh, we are building together with the FAC label. I'll take you back to uh, my holidays in summer in a beautiful French town near the Italian border. Um, only 500 people, very quiet town, but it had a very, very vibrant culture life. I even had fear of missing out. I didn't know where to go because the town itself, it had many artists, many uh, theater makers, many people connected to culture and making music. And it was just a great stay. I didn't have to, had to leave the town. I just had a great stay during 10 days and every day there was something to do. People coming together, dancing, theater performances, piano performances. It made me think about the message I wanted to bring to you and how we started initially from public as an organization is um, we want to inspire people to participate in leisure time, in culture, but also in sports and many different factors. 
And we have for this, the slide is not complete, we have um, a platform uh, with a website called Uit in Vlaanderen. And we inspire on a daily basis with uh, the, the people of uh, Marcom, um, people to, to inspire to, to go out and participate and meet each other. We have a very social engagement also. Our goal is also to include everyone, um, maybe people that don't have enough money to participate. Therefore, also we provide a solution. Going further, these are the three pillars we work on. The first partner, uh, pillar, and the, actually the core of the platform, is the event database. Uh, this exists this year for 20 years. Of course, technically, we have evolved. Eh? We don't use the technology of 20 years ago, but we're still working to create an open platform that everyone can use. In order to understand this platform, um, you have on the one side uh, many organizers that put the events into the database. In total, we register 28,000 uh, organizers a year, only for Brussels and Flanders. And on the other side, we have uh, more than 1,000 channels that use that information to uh, publish these events, like on the doors in the village in Saurge, on websites. And how do we do that? We have a website where they can put it in, but you can also connect with your own web environment, with your own uh, identity management system, your own structure. You can connect to that database and publish it on uh, various online agendas. Depending on your audience, uh, we talked earlier about, uh, yeah, if your festival is interested in, uh, people of the festival are interested in theater or opera, you could actually specify this within one region, more region. Uh, in total, we filter more than a thousand activities uh, on a yearly basis. Others, uh, public, other systems that use this uh, open structure and open platform are cities, museums, nature parks, health applications to motivate people to do some sports or uh, go out on walks, but also the public screens on cultural events in the city. So they all use uh, that central database, a technical term, what we call an API. It's just a door uh, to the database you can use with a standardized way. Another uh, and an important uh, part uh, is the print for magazines. Uh, we connect to it 95% um, of the cities in Flanders, that's the north of Belgium, and they all use the database to present their events in their magazines. Uh, also tourism is taking use, uh, making use of that database to present in different and various languages um, activities that are going on for their uh, goal audience. If you look at the different partnerships uh, we speak to, uh, it's, every, it's very variable. Uh, we, uh, I already mentioned cities and regions, but the platform can support many uh, kinds of, uh, of, of organizations. <laughs> And uh, one of this organization is also the project uh, where we support Festival Finder in, and it's a project called Festival Finder Alive. And in this uh, solution, we uh, festival organizers can have their own environment on festivalfinder.eu. They have their own communication ways, so they can connect to various other parts, but they can also publish their event into the event database. And it's immediately also published to an agenda uh, to for Festival Finder. So every event that is organized is immediately also published uh, on the Festival Finder uh, uh, .eu. Now, how do we match cities and festivals? Uh, since this month, we also integrated a website solution on Festival Finder .eu, especially for cities and regions. Um, and how does it work? Now you understand the event database. You can have, as a city, uh, as a member, you can have your own uh, city page where you can actually manage your content and your uh, pictures and promote your city. And I heard uh, in the discussion people saying, I think it's from Krakow, how, how can we connect with each other? Well, when we talk about audiences, uh, it's more than the audience only that visits the city. It's also about the people living in the city. It's also about the organizers outside in EU or the artists that would like to see uh, 
how can I connect with a certain city within the Festival Finder program? On the other side, you don't have to do anything. Uh, the event database is immediately publishing the events connected to your city. Um, this is a mock-up on uh, tests. Um, it will be released, I think, this month in, in production. But you can see that cities uh, actually can have their own uh, web page and uh, uh, immediate festivals that are taking place are automatically connected. Now, why should you use this? Well, it's just an easy way to connect. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, it doesn't take uh, a lot of investment. You just need to have the copy and your images ready in order to host your own uh, web page for your region and your city in order to present yourself and in order to stimulate participation and connection within, uh, within the Festival Finder program. I would like to uh, also show another example um, for matching cities and festivals. It has nothing to do yet with festivalfinder.eu, but we have a cooperation with the Cirque Festival and the city of Aalst. And uh, in this uh, solution, we have created 10 years ago a loyalty leisure pass. Now, it was not meant for the circus festival only. The idea of the leisure pass was that people could actually um, save points when participating at culture events or sport events uh, in order to get the connection uh, right. This uh, leisure pass also has a double meaning. Uh, people in poverty can have reduction at the entrance. So we have built a logic uh, in that. Now going back to the um, Cirque Festival, I think it's a nice example on, on combining festivals uh, with the city of Aals. First about the Cirque Festival, um, it's a free entry festival, very important. Uh, they have 100 circus performances in the city, 11 squares are actually provided with these performances and they uh, receive over than 25,000 visitors a year. Now, what is the problem mostly, I think, with cities and organizations is who is my audience? Who is visiting my, my city? And therefore, the festival organizer and the city asked us, can we find a solution in order to see what kind of, um, who is visiting actually the fes fes festival? And how did we do it? We actually built on the leisure pass and the same technology. We built uh, on every square a check-in tool for kids, but also for everyone uh, at the bracelet or the existing leisure pass, and they could check in and receive rewards uh, from the festival. It gave an extra festival experience, of course. But um, what also was done is that during the activation, they could also uh, retarget the same audience to uh, participate to the same festival that year. Um, and of course, we get anonymized uh, insight on the visitors. On the left side, you can see uh, and conclude, if you see else, that the most of the people that were participating were living actually in the city itself or nearby, and very rarely uh, they were coming from further in Ghent or Brussels. Um, so this was the first conclusion, which can be a basis on your communication plan again. And on the right uh, side, you can see uh, also the check-ins that were made during the festival. And it concluded that, yes, a river divides a city and uh, it also actually reduces participation in uh, your city. Um, actually, the 11 squares I was talking about on the left side uh, were all on the left side and nothing was going on on the right side. So people coming from the other side were almost not participating to the event. Uh, the year later, people uh, actually uh, created two extra squares on the other side of the river and in total the participation increased for the complete city. So these are the tools which are actually... Um, the popular side, the, the right side is the... Is a po yeah. I'm not an expert in, 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 in um, the, 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 po the political side and, and I, I hear you have, you have many challenges. But measuring these things can make also certain conclusions for us uh, in our, in our uh, platform. A last point is what uh, the third pillar we've built, exists five years now, is the museum pass. And it's actually based on the leisure pass. It has a, another uh, logic. 
uh, in that sense that you pay one fixed price per year and today you can access uh, 200, uh, 220 uh, musea in Belgium uh, with one payment, with one pass. Of course, I, I noted down a 360 degree solution. We have the marketing tools, we have these tools uh, to actually make sure we get this insight, but also to retarget your audience on, based on interests. And people actually like that. Uh, you can say, yeah, maybe it's giving, providing my, my, my privacy away. But if people opt in and if you put the people centralized and I as a person agree to, to get interesting information on circus, on theater, on concerts, then you can also retarget them because when you go out in the world, when you check your screens, there's an overload of information. And I really believe festivals and cities have also the, the, the challenge to, to, to be able to increase that participation in the future. So my name is Jeroen. I will put my name on in for during the day. Um, so we have some expertise on this. Um, if you would like to talk to me or share your issues or on communication, I'm really happy to, to also listen to you and maybe we can come up with something. Thank you. Just a question. You invite people even across your, your borders. Yes, that's a very important question. Um, we have decided to try this because it's, it's a test. It's, it's a, I, I cannot, we support many languages in the data bank and the database. Um, now we have a cooperation with Euregio Masrein. It's a um, uh, border region with the city of Hasselt, Maastricht, Aachen, Germany, and uh, Liège. And we really hope, we really hope to go further than the borders of Flanders and Brussels. We really hope to expand, to get your insights, to check your challenges, and the platform is there, so we really hope to do that. If you think of investing in something, there is already something there. Um, but the requirements, we have to check the requirements, we have to meet up and check what is possible. But the idea is indeed um, to go broader uh, than only Flanders and Brussels uh, with the, this uh, platform. Thank you. I would like to thank also uh, Sol for Europe for the workshop and uh, the amazing host, um, the Yerevan uh, uh, pers perspective. Um, thank you for that.